Hi guys, welcome to the Recovering Fundamentalist Podcast. I am your host, Will Hess, and we have Brian Bodie with us, my co-host today. Uh, you might notice that we are not Brian, JC, and or Nathan. No, we are Will and Brian with the church split. We are part of the RFP Network. Go check out the rfpnetwork.org to see the rest of the inferior podcasts. <laughs> oh, wow. Throwing shade already. <laughs> yeah. uh, just kidding. I love you all, but you know it's true. Just kidding, guys. I am I just having a good time. So, uh, Honestly, I just have so badly waited to be in JC's seat uh, that uh, uh, it's just getting to my head. We're going to blow it. I can already We're going to blow it. People are like, nope, <laughs> nope, we're leaving. Sorry, guys. So anyway, guys, uh, yes, the RFP guys, they are on their summer sabbatical. Good for them. Uh, we actually kind of took our own for a little bit. Yeah. We just recorded way ahead and just kept dropping them in advance. So for those who you do not know. Uh, we are the church split. We specialize in helping people escape their echo chambers. We actually started before the Recovering Fundamentalist podcast, uh, and we were not talking about the independent fundamental Baptist movement at all. We were talking about various different issues that, that split churches. Yeah. And that was where you and I, uh, later on, they asked if they, we would partner with them because I have an IFB background. Now, for people who do not know, Brian, what is your background? Yeah, I grew up Christian Reformed, um, and then later... Uh, became Baptist. I, I married a wonderful Baptist, so that's how I'm kind of in the Baptist realm now. But yeah, I did not know anything about IFB until I met you and I started questioning your sanity, telling me these stories. I was like, this guy can't be telling the truth. <laughs> yeah, you literally thought I was nuts. I'm like, no, no, this is literally the world I come from, and because yeah. I was your pastor. That's how we met. Yep. Uh, I was pastoring a church, and you came in, and by the way, I was pastoring an independent Baptist church, and Brian came in, and it wasn't your wife actually part, of, like her church was part of like something about regular Baptists. Yeah, I forget exactly. I just make fun of her and say she's like the general, regular, average, normal Baptist. So <laughs> she didn't have all the cool, spicy things like we had, like people throwing NIVs across the room no, and none putting of that. like axes through the TVs. None of that. Good time. But, uh, yeah, she's really biblically sound, and she's honestly, it's it's been great uh, being married to her because she's helped me with a lot of things where I didn't care that much about theology. And now I'm kind of annoying with it. <laughs> <laughs> and now we don't shut up about the really theology. Don't. So here we are. So um, a couple things. What? So that's what we do. We are. If you come to our channel, and I say channel because we're also on YouTube. We're not just on audio platforms, which you can find us on all audio platforms as well. But most everything we do, we shoot from a YouTube perspective. So usually there's overlays and convenient things. But we also we so we have things, um, all sorts of different things. But guys, today we are going to be having a special episode, which we're going to be talking about. Independent Fundamental Baptist College Rules. For those of you who are not familiar with, uh, we are the IFB world is really big in their colleges. Yeah, apparently. We, we identified by what college background you had. You know, are you a crown are you have crown background, a Pensacola background? Do you have a West Coast? Are you Hiles? Are you uh, you might get a Fairhaven in there or Golden State, all these different ones. So there's a lot of different uh, colleges out there. And we got a special treat for you guys today. <laughs> we don't have just anybody's college rules in front of us. We have none other than Great Plains Baptist Colleges. We have the infamous Bill Reeves, his college handbook. <laughs> we got it through nefarious ways of the black market. <laughs> <laughs> We have connections, let's just say. Yeah, uh, we, ha we have <laughs> IFB connections, and we were able to get our hands on it. To be fair, we did ask for uh, for it from him, but he told us to take a hike. Uh, and we also invited him on the church split to have a conversation. He also told us to continue to taking that hike. In very glorious Bill Rees fashion. Uh, yes. <laughs> that ended up on Twitter, of course. Yes, of course, yeah. You go, you go scroll through my Twitter feed for a while. <laughs> but this is... Uh, the, and for those of you guys who haven't, who are part of the RFP fam, if you have not joined... Net, uh, if you have not joined... Twitter, you just need to for the microcosm that is the IFB versus RFP on there. It's a wild time. It is like a weird corner of Twitter, and I enjoy it thoroughly. Because <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you never, never Twitter people also are like, what is this? So... Guys, uh, a couple things before we jump into talking about Bible College handbooks. We also do have Fairhaven Baptist, co Baptist Colleges uh, in front of us. We have a lot of other ones that were sent to us, but we're just going with these. This is a Fairhaven handbook from the 90s, and it hasn't really changed all too much. It just kind of updated some basic things. But I used to be a student at Fairhaven. I was only there for a semester. Don't get too excited. <laughs> I knew I wasn't going to make it because for those of you who do not know me, I was in the IFB, but I never was fully bought in. And then later on, I went to Crown, which uh, is a whole other thing. But speaking of Crown, uh, I have my one of my closest friends. Uh, my two best friends is Andrew and Brian. 
Brian's my co-host. Andrew, I wish could be on here more because he is from Ireland, complete with Irish sass and accent. <laughs> it's a great time, and we are going to have a special episode with him and me just going through our old college handbook together, and we're going to laugh at it. We're going to uh, make commentary as we go, and you'll probably hear some crazy stories. So tune into the church split for part two of this, which will have a special guest. That'll be a great time. Yeah, you're essentially kicking me out because I don't have a good accent. Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> if you got a cool accent, I would probably, you know, hire you full time with I can, I can all our with church it. split dollars. I can live with it. <laughs> <laughs> all right, guys. So uh, a couple things. Uh, if you want to check out the church split, before we jump into this, a couple things. One, we do uh, we talk to God is Grace. She's a highly progressive Christian, and we have about a three hour conversation with her on there uh, about abortion. Abortion. We are big abortion apologists. We are uh, well pro life apologists, I should say. Yeah. Um, not abortion. <laughs> Easy killer. Easy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so we do speak with Brenda at God is Gray. That is actually what kind of put us on the map a little bit. Also, we uh, have a Clarence Sexton response that is very popular. I think a lot of people in the RFP fam have actually seen it still. And they probably know what it's regarding. <laughs> yeah, exactly. The whole system about being a God hater. Uh, then we also have one with Bible Baptist Church in Charlevoix, Michigan. We do a response where the two boys who are uh, who are kicked out of their uh, church, and one of them was kicked out of his house for not being a King James onlyist. And they live here now. <laughs> and they live with me now. They're upstairs. I, are they, they may be home from Bible study now. I don't know. Um, then we have three Nathan Rager episodes, two of them rebuttaling his uh, terrible teachings, and three with him on there in person. And uh, those of you who may have listened to his recent, uh, I mean, his episode with the RFP, you'll notice that with those guys, it was actually much more cordial. With us, it was much more of a beatdown. Uh, so if you're there for a bloodbath, go check it out. And then finally, our most popular series uh, for you IFB folks uh, who are like me with that background is we have an entire series and playlist. Uh, I, I suggest going to YouTube because it's a whole playlist there from start to finish, and it's going to keep growing. I'm on gonna King keep James Onlyism. On King James Onlyism, yep. exactly. Uh, where I, and I get a lot more studious in that one. Uh, fun fact for you, we're actually very nerdy. So but now, uh, with that being said, we're going to jump into these college handbooks. We're going to talk about it, and we will read it and make commentary as we go, crack some jokes, have a few, ta- have a few snarky moments, probably, because uh, that's what we do at the church split. But First, I am super excited to be able to play the best intro in all of podcasts. It really is. So with all, no further ado, let's go. Three. You know what makes women stupid is college. Jesus was not a bartender. Hi, man. Two. You have lost your mind. Long tongue heifers have given me a lot more trouble than heifers wearing breeches, and you know that. Say amen right there. One. Let me tell you something, bozo. They'll be selling frosties in hell for this boy. Put on a pair of pink underwear. Amen. I sucked my thumb till I was 14 years of age. Hi, man. Well, that was fun. <laughs> that was, I have wanted to do that for so long. <laughs> for, so, Brian. So whoever made that intro, it's amazing. <laughs> yeah, they deserve a raise. I'm not going to lie. The first time I ever listened to RFP, I was, I went back a few times just to listen to that intro. It's so good. Let's just say your first thousand downloads from us was just listen to your intro. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> on repeat. Um, by the way, for those of you watching on video, you might see uh, Brian. You want to move your head for a second so everyone can see our gimpy sound square? Look oh, at that. Oh. Look at that sucker dangling behind you. We can't get it to stick. Now, oh, what do you do, guys? We're on a budget. It's down again. <laughs> <laughs> we will put that back later, but for somebody who's going to point it out online, inevitably, we're just going to do this. But first things first, we are going to jump into now Bill Rees' handbook. We are going to do this. So, Brian... He has a foreword. Why don't you yeah. go ahead and give us that? And real quick, I want to make sure that we're all on the same page here. Um, we are going to be a little bit snarky. We are going to crack jokes. We are going to say things that might be a little bit insensitive. But I want everyone to understand that we do appreciate good biblical rules for Bible colleges. Where we have a problem with uh, Bill Reeves's college as well as Fairhaven and others is where they're taking these rules and they're they're 
they're pretending, they're feigning that these are, are from the Bible, they're from Scripture, they're informed from God, and they really are just methods of control. And one of the biggest issues I have with a lot of these Bible colleges is the fact that these are adults who are supposed to be trained for ministry, they're supposed to be running the next church, they're supposed to be the ones to stand in the gate between like the lost soul and hell, so to yeah. speak, and you treat them like they're in sixth grade. And I think it's a real issue where we have ill-equipped people who have been told and trained to be yes-men, to be controlled and told what to do their entire life, that they have no idea what to do from here. And you're going to see that as we go. Uh, there are a few things I don't want to keep hitting that nail on the head as we go. So a few things to notice is I want you to guys to notice the vague terms. They use broad terms throughout these things. You know, what they would just say, they'll use a vague term like inappropriate. But they're not specific on what could be inappropriate. Yeah. So that way the definition can shift whenever you do something they might not like or prefer. Yeah, or to try to get rid of someone and just make up a rule and say, okay, well, we don't like your attitude, so here's this new specific rule that we didn't write down and you're gone. Which is ironically directly uh, opposed to how God does things, is that God makes very clear in his word exactly what a sin is, exactly what is right and wrong. He, yep. The objective morality stems from God perfectly, and... There's they keep vague and broad where God is not. In fact, there's 613 commandments in the Torah alone where God is being quite specific. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, with that being said, let's jump in. Yeah. So here's a little bit of the forward from Bill Brees, which I, I just thought was funny. So he says this handbook is a set of necessary guideline, guidelines and sanctions. And he says the Bible is also such a book. And I just thought, think that's kind of funny because it really short sells the Bible, right? The Bible is not just a book of rules and sanctions and guidelines. It also has the greatest message on earth, the gospel. And uh, I think a lot of times the IP loses this idea that there's so much good here and there's so much excitement over Christ. And we just seem to get caught up in the negative and we get caught up in the rules and the legalism. And uh, anyways, I just thought that was funny. That's literally the first sentence of the foreword. Um, he also says that the handbook cannot include every possible infraction the student could make. Like we were talking about, they're, they're going to add pieces and parts in here. Um, he says the attitude is the key ingredient to success, which is already trying to kind of preempt people having it's an issue like, with some right, like rules. expecting the issue. So they're like getting ahead of the curve, like, oh, but your attitude's going to make it whether or not you succeed or not. Because if you have a problem, it's definitely not our rules. Yeah. It's totally that your bad attitude. And we did a response video to Bill Reeves, and he's talking about standards and preferences and convictions and principles. And uh, he actually mentions his Bible school rules then and says that, yeah, a lot of people think they're crazy, but they, they really come from a good spot. And the good spot is, is from his mind. And that's why he's just And then he's like, well, but when guy. they grow in, spiritual, in their spiritual walk, they just come to agree with my rules. Yep. It's so absurd. It gets ridiculous. And it's just, it's like the ultimate gaslighting control thing. And it's like, is this what a cult does? I think this is what a cult does. You yeah. know, like, oh, don't question my authority. In, or, in fact, when you become an, the enlightened one as I am, you will agree. So uh, let's see what else we got here. Next page, he actually has the list of all the faculty, which I think is funny because there's 10. And we have a pretty good authority. There's about four kids that are go to this college right four now. Four students, man. And I think like aren't yeah, I think two of them are his own sons, and then one of them is his son in law, and yeah. then there's like one exterior student. So public schools take note. This is the kind of faculty to student ratio we really need. <laughs> <laughs> Ten of us, four of you. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh goodness. So that's how they keep you in control. Exactly. That kind uh, of ratio. So in order to provide the most safe and secure environment, this is one of the rules, single female students will be provided dormitory accommodations. And these are on, on uh, campus there. And why? It says, quote, can take so they can take advantage of the opportunity to work for the church. <laughs> and it says opportunity here, but later on you'll find out that it's not optional. Um, and then, so then with male students, they, male students are required to be living off campus in administrative approved, approved housing. So they have to approve of where you live. I find that to be very <laughs> weird. I guess it's their way of pre making sure you don't fall into a meth lab or something. Yeah. Just the, all these Bible college rules we're going to go through. There's such a, just a dichotomy of rules for men and rules for women. And it's just, to me, it just, it's mind boggling that it's so different. But Which is funny because it doesn't, God say something about like there's no male or female in Christ. And then also God shows no partiality. Meanwhile, we're showing lots of partiality. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. Yep. So um, one of the things, he, then he moves on and it, uh, there's, um, by the way, we're only reading highlights. Uh, we, we could seriously be here for hours reading through this and you just laugh along with <laughs> us, but we, we picked out selective areas. So this says students will learn to hate the sin and love the sinner. So 
ministering to others is the heartbeat of the Christian's life and the whole purpose for the Bible college. Students will learn to hate the sin and love the sinner. Which all I have to say is, really, Reeves? Like, I've seen you on Twitter. I've seen what you said about Nathan, Brian, JC, us. He's uh, Didn't he say the fact that he called you and I drunks who were, what, going to burn in hell? or? Oh, yeah. Yeah, he was very mean. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, so, so much for hating the sin and loving the sinner. I didn't feel like my sinnerness was being loved there a little, but it's unfortunate fine. For, unfortunate for Bill. We've been debating people online for a long time and really have a thick skin, and it just makes us laugh. So thank yeah. you for the laughs, Bill. <laughs> I'm just like logical fallacies everywhere. I, it's like it's like uh, that Buzz Lightyear meme. Like there's no sign of intelligent life anywhere. That's what I feel like when someone keeps using really bad arguments. But anyway, we, all, we think in memes. So sorry if we just keep bringing those up. <laughs> <laughs> you think in memes more than anything. Yes, which reminds me, you should follow us on all the social media platforms, especially uh, Facebook and Instagram, because we drop memes like they're hot. Because mainly Brian. Brian's the one who makes the memes. Some of them are fan submitted. I don't make many of them because <laughs> I feel like mine are clunky in comparison to your masterful. You're just, that's why we call you Dr. Brian Bodie. You got your honorary doctorate by the RFP because of your expertise in memory. The doctorate of memes. Great. <laughs> <laughs> that would be something our generation would come up with. It really would be. Anyway, uh, want to take the next one? Yeah, so now we're talking about a car policy for automobiles. So it says GPBC reserves the right to restrict the use the use of an automobile by any student if its use is determined to be detrimental to the student education or well-being. Now, we talked about vagueness. There's a rule that doesn't seem to have a very specific criteria, but apparently they can just let you use your car or not let you use your car however they feel like. Exactly. If you've been uh, thinking about going to the movies, they can take your keys, I guess. Well, remember that you can't go to movies here. <laughs> he talks about that's, that's exactly. unchristian conduct. We're going to get to that here in a minute. Now, when we go all the way through, if you fast forward here, it goes to, to uh, there's a policy about withdrawing from school. So if you want to withdraw from being a student, you want to leave the school. Now, most places, you would just leave and send in your resignation letter, and they might give you like a prorated uh, amount, or they might just take your pi payment for the m month, whatever. You mean the worldly way. The world, Yeah, the worldly way. <laughs> uh, that, can we park on that for two seconds, by sure. the way, since you brought that up? <laughs> I love how in the IFB they preach, and this used to get me all the time, um, they preach so much against being worldly. Don't be worldly. Don't be worldly. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, though, you have this these worldly colleges, like right? You have these, these degree programs, all these different colleges. And is that not like a worldly institution? Because I don't know. The last I checked, the way that it was done biblically was always through discipleship and mentorship. Like, that's why Jesus had 12 disciples. He was a rabbi, and rabbis always took other people under them so that they, too, could become his disciples and become rabbis themselves. Yeah. It was always – like college is like a modern worldly, if we yeah. use their term. It, it, it technically fits under their definition. If you actually understand the biblical definition of worldly, you'd know it means the sinful nature of the world, not – Anyway. But if you want to quit Bill Reeves' school, what do you have to do, Will? Well, in order to quit Bill Reeves' school, first off, there will be penalties incurred to the student who withdraws from school. <laughs> and my question is, what are you, are you going to bury his body in the back? What do you mean you're going to – how I think it would be a Twitter tirade for about five days. <laughs> yes. Yeah, well, seriously, I'll slander you on Facebook, right? There will be penalties incurred when a student withdraws from school. What does that even mean? Because they're gone. If they're withdrawing, how can you give them a penalty? Yeah. Uh, much counsel should be sought before the decision is made. To withdraw from school, the student must notify the administration in person. So they can talk you out of it. So they can talk you out. <laughs> we want your money still, bro. <laughs> uh, and they need all that labor. In the <laughs> all that free labor. <laughs> um, and then they have a fun cell phone policy. Some basic stuff like not allowing it in class, but also no cell phones allowed in church. So no blue letter Bible app and no digital Bibles. Because that has other Bibles. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, okay, so now we get into improper conduct. Actually, actually, not just that. Sorry. Pause the improper conduct. The thing with the no cell phones and that like also is because they're like, well, they will actually literally talk about how like people do not have spirit – they're not spiritual enough or they're not doing a right, a right Christian thing by using a digital Bible. Almost like they equate the parchment to being the, the holy words of God when it should be the – words of God that's pure and holy or what I, yeah, like, is it the words or the parchment? It needs to be on a scroll. In my opinion, are, aren't you a, these modern worldly Bibles? You're a scroll only aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> that should uh, be my new Twitter handle. 
anyways, now we're good for improper conduct. Now we're good for improper <laughs> conduct. That's what I talk about. That sorry. Yeah. So okay. So here's a lot of stuff that is considered improper. Um, so participate in activities that are not in harmony with the with Christian life. Okay. Here's some legalism for you. Such as, but not limited to. Of course not. Uh, reading or looking at questionable material. Like Wait, what's questionable material? Motor Trend magazine, some comic books. I don't know. <laughs> looking at questionable material, but to them, like questionable could be anything, right? Like anything not from the Watchtower. So, oh wait, I'm. Oh wait, I'm no, getting confused with Jehovah's Witnesses. Yeah, there. that's that's for our <laughs> other rebuttal. <laughs> Sorry, guys. <laughs> um, use of tobacco, drinking alcoholic beverage, beverages. Uh, even though Jesus made some of that, um, gambling, playing cards. Which I want to know, can can we do Go Fish? Can we play Go Fish? Is you can't that... play Go Fish because playing cards is uh, connected to gambling. Now, do, now, pay no mind that you can also gamble on who wins a football game. Oh. But we're, we're okay with football games, but we're not okay with playing cards. Interesting. I like um, you can standards gamble like over anything. Also, dancing, we're going to ignore every single... And Brian, this is very important for you. I know you're new to the IFB, and you are my disciple, so I need you to understand <laughs> that dancing, we ignore all the parts in Scripture about dancing. Good. I'm a terrible dancer. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're, that is the work of the Lord, just sparing us from having to watch you dance. Uh, attending movies. This I never understood this IFB thing of like attending movies is bad. But you can watch them at home. You can watch them at home, yeah. You'll watch John Wick at home, but you better not go to the theater because Appearance of Evil. (laughs) Even though Appearance of Evil literally is talking about when evil appears, but whatever. Um, The use of profanity. What the heck? Well, well, funny you say that, Brian. (laughs) What the heck? Uh, Because also euphemisms are not allowed. Uh, In parentheses, such as, but not limited to, gosh darn heck and G are to be avoided. It's funny that they're so sinful that they're going to write them down. <laughs> yeah, they're going to write down the expletive language and euphemisms, but they're, they, I, where's my list for profanity? I want to know what's considered profane. <laughs> uh, Here's Brian's hot take for the day. Uh, euphemisms, uh, banning euphemisms is, is, just, is just politically correct speech. Oh. <laughs> I, I'm over here like, so no euphemisms at all. So I can't be like, gee, Willikers, Batman, at all. Well, that one might be okay. <laughs> like, I don't know. I said Batman. Is that worldly? Is that questionable material? I, I don't understand anymore. Uh, I don't know I'm so about co- Batman. I, I, mm. oh, or, or abuse of drugs. Okay. Uh, let's see what okay. else. Uh, also, there is a biblical rule here, guys. Students must be honest. Cheating, lying, and stealing will not be tolerated. Hey, biblical. This is what we're looking for in actual Bible college rules, rules that are based in Scripture that make sense that are in accordance to what God tells us to do, not making up new lines, new sins, new um, things against people that we think will lead to other sins. And then also right here, students are not permitted to exhibit public displays of affection toward the opposite gender. (laughs) It says nothing about the same gender. Get away from me. Hey, Brian, how you doing? (laughs) (laughs) It's it's so funny because they're so obsessed with the opposite gender touching thing. And I'm always like, it's so weird to me because it, oh, no, this is the thing in the IFB in general. It's so paranoid of you ever having any physical contact with the opposite sex that it all becomes sexualized. It becomes every bit sexualized because even to give someone a hug, a comforting hug would be sexual. So because they're always telling you, well, one thing leads to another. Oh, you never know when you get that burning in you and all this these kind of things where it's like, well, now just to even give a high five is sexualized. Cause, or if I'm alone with somebody by accident because a bunch of people left the room, I just happen to be standing next to this person where I go, we better go because we were talking. <laughs> it's, it sexualizes it, right? Because you now all of a sudden you're like, oh, what if one thing leads to another? Suddenly you're thinking of sex when that's not, that should be the furthest thing from your mind, but we over sexualize. Doesn't all this really stem from 1 Corinthians 7? Uh, yeah. Uh, the whole like, it is good for a man not to touch a woman. Yeah. But, but Paul's actually quoting. Corinthians there and replying to what they asked him about. What? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's true because uh, Corinth is such a was such a sexually debased city that these Christians were like, okay, great. So you don't want us to do any of the sexual stuff. So it's good for a man not to touch a woman. And then Paul's like, no, you can touch a woman within marriage. It's better for better to be married than to burn. <laughs> Just within marriage, don't be disgusting. That's his. That's his moral. <laughs> um, also, intentional disobedience. This this rule basically should have my name next to it. Intentional disobedience, failing to obey instructions that have been clearly given but not necessarily contained in the handbook, which tells me, again, a vagary. You're, like, trying to find ways and loopholes so that way you can give extra commands. 
uh, that I don't follow. And that one's punishment is five demerits up to expulsion. So yep. you literally could be expelled for anything if you just have some attitude of intentional disobedience. Also, the college campus is also on church campus and all these places. Um, and I just find it funny that they actually found it necessary to have a specific rule of that there is no chewing gum on church property. Hey, I agree with Bill on this one. I hate the sound of chewing gum. Are you holding <laughs> other people to your own preferences? In this instance, yes. Wow, you're a legalistic. <laughs> wow, I thought I knew you. Follow me on Twitter and send me your hate. <laughs> <laughs> all right, uh, this is use of internet. This. <gasps> the irony of ironies of the entire rule book from Bill Reed. I was working on a sermon today on First Peter chapter 2, 1 through 3, and it says to literally put away all hypocrisy. And uh, right here, use of internet social networking platforms is 10 demerits to expulsion. Not allowed to use social networking platforms. <laughs> this is the absolute biggest hypocrisy because if anyone knows anything about Bill Reeves, he has more Twitter accounts than he has students. <laughs> I'm not kidding. <laughs> share this episode on Twitter if you've been blocked by Bill Reeves. And share it a couple times if you've been blocked by more than one of his Twitter accounts. Exactly. <laughs> it's uh, He's always on there. He's always trolling. He always is stalking. Uh, he stalked the archers for a while. Took pictures of your wife even, which was a little creepy. Yeah. Um, it was this whole thing. And... Uh, well, guys, there it is. He's a hypocrite. So uh, he it's true for me, but not for thee. But that's kind of a running gag in all these little places. Also says, uh, single students are not permitted to participate in unchaperoned dating. This was new for you, wasn't it? As yeah. a person outside the IFB, tell me about that a little bit when you found out there always had to be a third person. Yeah, I was like, but aren't you like adults, though? <laughs> Like, I don't know, when when my wife and I were dating before we got married, um, that was some of the best time in my life because I really got to know her. And I can't imagine trying to get to know her if it was chaperoned. I mean, we all just instantly put up walls, right, when there's other people here. And, and we're getting to know someone intimately. You know, want to get understand what what makes them tick. You, you're you going to ask questions that they don't want to tell other people. You're going to exchange information that's, that's a lot more personal in nature. And that's how you really get to know someone. Um, and you can do that without uh, committing sexual immorality. <laughs> well, and that's what's funny is that a lot of these people, I know a lot of people who got married in the IFB who really struggled after they got married because they'd always known their their spouse around other people and they never got to know them intimately like on an emotional level, and suddenly now they're married and supposed to be able to function on an emotional, mental, spiritual, physical, and sexual level that they weren't ready for because they'd never had those opportunities. Yeah, it really just seems like to be delaying maturity here. Mm -hmm. I well, thought we're supposed to be preparing them to be good, mature Christians. Yeah, well, uh, apparently you are... And that's another thing. It's like, well, so if, what if these were single people who lived out on their own? How in the world would they ever be able to date anybody if yeah. they didn't come to your college? Would they? Would they, you expect them to also have a third? I don't know. It just gets crazier and crazier. Um, all right. Uh, more, a date is considered unchaperoned when parents of the boy or girl or GPBC staff and faculty member cannot see or hear the dating couple. It would really be unfortunate for some of the people if I was chaperoning because I'm pretty hard of hearing. So I'd have to be really <laughs> you close. You have to like right next to them the entire time like, hey. What you doing? Can you say that again? I didn't hear what you said. <laughs> <laughs> um, students are not to touch members of the opposite gender unless they're related or married. <sighs> There's so many jokes I could say there, but I'm just going to let those hang in the air, okay? I'll let you guys fill in the blanks on that. Um, I get the spirit of that, but seriously, what the heck? <laughs> <laughs> well, like, um, okay, so I, I'm getting ahead of myself, but when I was at Fairhaven, a friend of mine uh, was walking on ice, and she slipped, and I caught her from behind, and I picked her up. I later on got in trouble. For her touching her. And I was like, so you'd rather her fall and crack her head open on ice? Like, 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 well, you know, we don't know if someone's doing that just as an excuse to grab. I'm like, you you really think we're that perverted that we're like, oh, just fall so that way I can grope you. Like, what? So did you marry her? I did not marry her. She's actually <laughs> married to another man now. She cheated on me. <laughs> like, uh, I held her first. <laughs> it's so messed up. Um, inappropriate communication. Which is vague as all get out. Inappropriate communication, including but not limited to email, text messages, written correspondence, and telephone conversations will not be tolerated. Okay, Bill. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> Define inappropriate, sir, because I've seen you to behave pretty bismally. Also, this is so poorly written because I can't tell. Is it is inappropriate communications, like, are they talking about the content or are they talking about the means by which you are communicating? Like, are they saying, like, no electronic messaging because inappropriate communication, including but not limited to email, text messages? <laughs> like, 
Yeah, I feel like uh, this goes with the social media one. You just can't touch electrons. Yeah, it's <laughs> it's so sad when these are supposed to be colleges, play, an institution of education, and their stuff is so poorly written that they're unclear in their own meaning. It's so bad. It gets worse at the Fairhaven one. There's some parts that we're gonna have to like stumble across because it's written like I don't know a third grader wrote it. That's actually that's actually doing a disservice to third graders. <laughs> All right, um, the employment section here is really funny. So it says ladies enrolled in classes and living in the dormitories, which we already read they have to live in the dormitories, uh, will be employed. Not may, not can, will be employed by North Platte Baptist Church. Yep. So, so if you become a student there and you're a woman, you have to become the church's employee. This kind of sounds like indentured servitude. Kind of, yeah, I was going to say, it sounds like forced servitude, if you ask me. And after seven years at the college, you're able to go free. <laughs> <laughs> a straight Bible right there. Um, actually, kind of is. Anyway, <laughs> um, a student may not quit a job without sufficient notice to the employer. And all I'm thinking is, you mean the, only the male students, right? Because all the women are working for the church. Or maybe you have to have the job, but then you can quit, but then you immediately get rehired again. I don't know. This... It just doesn't make any sense. Someone didn't read these rules through. Uh, well. Yes. Um, on campus students, each dorm student is expected to have his or her own room ready for a walkthrough inspection at 9 a.m. each weekday. This is a normal thing in IFB places. Uh, IFB colleges, they're obsessed with room inspections. Every morning you have room inspection. You have to do your room duties and your dorm duties before you go to class because if you don't, you'll get demerits when they inspect. Uh, it's just so weird. Like, why do you have to inspect my room, bro? This is where I live. This is my space. My underwear is hanging there. Why? Because it's, I've worn them three times, and I'm trying to make sure I get the odor out <laughs> before I have to wash them because I want to save quarters for the dorm washer that and dryer. Is, that is a college boy thing to do. <laughs> <laughs> I also think it's funnier it says his or her, but didn't we already read that the men are living off campus and the women are living on campus? So really, this is just for the women. Again. Oh, that's a good point. Yeah, I didn't even catch that. You're right. Um, also, another fun one here. TVs and radios are not allowed in the dorm unless the administration places one in the dorm. So, in other words, it's true for me, but not for thee. We can do it. You cannot. This just sounds like Soviet Russia, right? Oh, you cannot have a radio in your room. You might listen to propaganda from those crazy Americans. So, you can only do what the administration says. <laughs> you better pray to Mother Baptist to see if you get the TV, Yes. Um, one of my uh, favorite things about the IFB is that they're hyper conservative, right? And they're big, and they hate communism, right? Anything to do with communism, Marxism, um, and ditto. I'm not a fan either. But one of the funny things about it is the fact that they're like, yeah, those authoritarian regimes, and I'm like, okay, they're like, yeah, the unquestionable authority, and you have to do what everyone says. They rob you of your liberty and your freedom and individuality, and I'm like, okay, great. Now do church. Good. No, no, okay, that what you just You're said. You're on a roll. You're on a roll. Keep going. Now do church. <laughs> Uh, no, we're not going to do church. Okay. All right. So no anyway. music CDs should be brought into the dorm. Approved CDs will be allowed in the student's car only. <laughs> it's so bizarre. Like, you, can, we approved of it, but we will not allow it in that building. This is car music, okay? Just as God ordained. This is, yeah, this is car jam <laughs> music, and that's it. Uh, also, students that are permitted to live off campus, there's a few lists of them, but then male students. Then people wonder why, like, the IFB gets accused of so much of sexism. You know, uh, you and I both discussed this. We were what was considered like light complementarians in our in our view of men and women relationships. Mm -hmm. And they call themselves complementarian, but they're actually what we call like an extreme male headship piety is their view. But they are like, oh, no, we're comp. And you're like, no, you're not. You're, you're making all of us look bad. <laughs> um, anyway, uh, let's see. Um, ooh, dress code. Oh, yeah. You all know you were waiting for this to come up. So there's a women's and men's dress code. And the women's is 14 points of, of rules. And the men's is six. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it pay My male privilege is shining through. There you go. You got it finally. Uh, so all ladies must wear dresses or skirts that reach two inches below the knee. What about three inches? Oh, you can't do that. That would be within two inches. <laughs> also, the first statement here, each young lady is to be discreet and modest in her appearance. Again, vague. Necklines must be no lower than three inches below the collarbone. Uh, because, again, we're apparently women can't be trusted uh, to dress themselves because men will lust after them. But we can't blame the man for his lust. We have to blame the woman for showing herself. Uh, it, it just rids people of personal responsibility all the time. Uh, gene material of any color is not allowed for classes, church services, or soul winning. So, like, women can't wear, like, jean denim skirts. That was like a big thing at most of these places were denim skirts. In fact, Brian, you should look up some uh, Baptist, some pictures of Baptists. Uh, they will even be wearing skirts while skiing. 
they will have snow pants oh, and man. then wear a skirt over the snow pants. That actually doesn't seem that modest, <laughs> to be honest. <laughs> said, of course not. Uh, there's actually a lot of things like that. Um, but why the jean material? Is this because it's just too close to jean pants and that's considered cross dress? Probably. Uh, no, probably. It's more like because it's informal and they have a certain look. Because really, uh, they say all this is for modesty, but we're going to see here in a minute. It's not for modesty. It's not about modesty. It's about having a certain look and a cookie cutter appearance. We want everyone to be the same. A big issue with actual uh, these colleges is the fact that they try to create everyone in the same image. They try to make everyone the same cookie cut, cut everyone of the same cloth. And if you're not of that same cloth, you better convert or you will drop out or just be considered less spiritual than everybody else because you cannot fit or you will not fit within that particular realm. Become one of those trendies. Yep. So sweatshirts or coats may not be worn to cover up improper dress. Okay. So it really isn't about modesty at all. Not a bit. Woman might be like, ah, oh, this shirt, I feel it like goes too low on my chest, so I'm going to wear a scarf over it. Not tolerable. It's not about modesty. It really is not. It's about control. Also, it says T-shirt form-fitting clothing through the blouses and skirts. Oh, no. And dresses and skirts with slits are not allowed. So it means if you wear ankle-length skirts, there cannot even be a slit in it. Yeah, I'm picturing them like walking like geishas and just like their feet are just... Yeah, like, yeah, like they kind of just float along. I always joked around that uh, at college. I was like, oh, yeah, because we can't know you have ankles. If you have, we, we men just assume you guys float everywhere because them ankles, though. I can't handle it when a girl shows her ankles. Yeah, so they're wearing some uncomfortable clothes. The men get to wear nice suits. <laughs> That's so dumb. Um, all right, let's see. Uh, shoes must have a back, so no flip flops or sandal type scenarios. Now, I thought this was like, oh, like, are we sexualizing the heel now? But you're saying it's a noise thing? Yeah, well, I know for sex, you know, he hated the noise of flip flops. Oh, my goodness. So he made everyone. And just keep, consider that, consider the arrogance of that, by the way. That thing annoys me, so I'm making a rule for everybody just because it's a mild inconvenience. <laughs> like, no one can chew gum on campus. Why? Because it annoys me. I wonder why there's so many narcissists as IFB pastors. Exactly. Actually, uh, top 10 uh, employment, uh, employment options for narcissists, and the top 10 is ministry. <laughs> well, look out, churches. You got narcissists coming your way. All right. Um, the, my favorite rule here of all the ones. For the women? For the women. Hairstyle should be appropriate and attractive. Bill... You're creepy. <laughs> that, that's so creepy. They must be like, appropriate. Okay. Attractive. Ew. Like, I better think you're hot. <laughs> it's so gross. I hope you've changed this rule now. Um, I really do. No, men. Men only have six rules. Okay. <laughs> uh, men should have a tapered haircut. No hair should be touching the collar or ears because that's what Jesus did. Oops. Jesus definitely had ears, hair that was tapered, and it did not touch his ears. Fun fact, he probably actually had much longer hair, but whatever. <laughs> um, belts are to be worn at all times. What if I'm wearing basketball shorts? I wonder if this is like some like the mask stuff where you can just, as long as the mask is on you, it's okay. So like maybe you like have the belt wrapped around your shoulder or something. Oh, no, 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 no. You want to wear that puppy right up on the breastbone like a bra. No, I don't want to wear a bra. White undershirts are to be worn with white dress shirts. The amount of nitpicking that this is, like this is literally the definition of micromanaging. If you're wearing a white shirt, you better wear a white shirt underneath it. Hey, that's just classy. Don't go wearing none of those brown shirts. I mean, yeah, no, don't get me wrong. You should definitely wear white shirts with white shirts underneath. I mean, you, you get it. it. It looks nice, but it's just funny the fact that you would think that that actually constitutes as a dress code rule. Um, jeans of any color are not allowed for church services, soul winning, or classes, so never. Shoes must be be neat and practical. No work boots and no cowboy boots. Because we all know, dude, if you are uh, out soul winning and you're wearing work boots, those work boots will get between you and that person from being saved. Cowboys aren't Christians. Oh. <laughs> um, white socks should only be worn with tennis shoes. It's, again, the weird micro. Like, there's so many Don't weird wear them with sandals, though. Don't do I will get behind that. Yes. If you wear I them with. I used to do that. My wife made it. Incredible amount of fun of me, <laughs> and I learned my lesson. Yeah, dude, that's terrible. Why would you do that? <laughs> it was comfortable. I thought I, I knew get, you. I didn't have to get, like, grass blades on my feet. So dumb. <laughs> um, after one insufficient funds notice, by the way, of with your student while you're making payments, after one insufficient funds notice is received from the bank, the student will be required to pay by cash, money order, or credit card only. <laughs> no grace for you. You know something? <laughs> no soup for you. Call or text messages will not be made or received after 11 p.m. Wait, received? Yeah, apparently. <laughs> How do you control that? Like, 
half my friends would be like, oh, he gets in trouble if we text him after 11, 1101, spam. <laughs> yeah, here we Meme go. Meme dump. Like, <laughs> <laughs> it's like the one on the internet with the cat facts. It just keeps coming with more cat facts. Exactly. <laughs> and they're just rolling in demerits like, oh, my gosh. <laughs> Block this number. <laughs> yeah, it's so, like, again, it's so micromanagey. It's ridiculous. And then you wonder why half these people leave these colleges and they're either, like, completely mentally broken uh, or they're just like, or they they only want to control other people because they've been controlled their whole time. And when I was reading through this, I was like, well, how would they know? And then read this rule. <laughs> Staff and faculty may check cell phones periodically. The student may be asked by a staff member at any time to surrender his or her phone. Is this an internment camp or is this a college? By the way, that's not legal. Uh, it is not legal. Fun fact for you, not even an officer of the law can pull you over and demand to see your cell phone. Uh, when my wife and I got in trouble at Crown, they tried telling us we can't have any correspondence. I shot her text like right afterwards, and she's like, "Don't text; you're gonna get us in trouble." And I was like, "How are they gonna know? How are they gonna know?" <laughs> It'd be cool. It'd How be could cool. they know? They're gonna know. <laughs> um, anyway, uh, so so that was Bill Reeves College, Great Plains Baptist College. Yeah, that was that was uh, yeah. That was now, special. Now turn, trying to turn it up to 11 and do the Fairhaven rules. <laughs> Ooh, okay, okay, you guys are not ready for this. Fairhaven is insane, and they've even added to these. Uh, they've added, like, weight check-ins. Like, when I was there, I couldn't find one from when I was there, guys, mainly because I uh, threw that out ages ago. wasn't expecting to do a ministry that was so IFP-focused. Russ would have held on to it. Um, I handed this to my wife, just the cover page. And she did a 15-minute monologue about it because she's like, this is ridiculous. Should have recorded it. wasn't it. even the rules. It was just the opening little forward here. <laughs> yep. And my favorite part about this forward, by the way, is that there's typos all over in it. Like, it's really poorly written. And it's like, okay, now, and you want me to go to you for my education? You can't even type thoroughly? All right. So, so what happens when you get an honorary doctorate? So the forward is great, guys, because it's loaded with typos. They can't even learn to speak. Uh, to write thoroughly, properly, um, <laughs> and they want to educate me and my children. But um, here we go. You, got, you guys are not ready for this forward because uh, my favorite part is how much it focuses on just the rules alone. Like it's not talking about, hey, our stu- you know, the, the ministry preparing you, how excited they are for this next step, yeah. uh, the, great in- the great place that is – no. It's mostly about rules. We so, know you're going to hate this, so we're going to try to preempt it. <laughs> we're gonna, we're gonna, yeah, I'm just giving you guys cringe alert. All right? <clears throat> Dear students, the rules and discipline of Fairhaven Baptist College are misunderstood more than any other facet of the college's entire program, but there are few things you will get here any more important. Without the rules, Fairhaven Baptist College would cease to be a Christian institution. (laughs) It would not be the type of place a good Christian would want to attend. We 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 have seen firsthand that students are happy and secure when they know what is expected of them and realize they are in a school where the rules are made to be kept and not broken. Dude, rules are made to be broken, not kept. Get out of here. You're killing me with this accent. <laughs> Ahem. Shut up, pleb. A well-disciplined life will be an effective and productive life. And so that which is presented to you in the student handbook is not designed to make your life unpleasant, although it will, for <laughs> you, but it is given in your best interest with a genuine concern for the development of your character and Christian testimony. If it is your desire to be a servant of God thoroughly, I do not know how to spell thoroughly, furnished unto all good works, I'm sure the discipline of Fairhaven Baptist College will not be resented, although you may not understand At first, the reasons behind some of the rules, instead of writing off these rules in your own mind as being foolish, should have some maturity to realize there is a reason behind each of them. And any time you would like an explanation of any rule, you will find the administrator happy to sit down and go into the matter fully. Have a good year. May the Lord bless you as he trains you for his service. Sincerely, Roger (laughs) Vogelin. President. Oh my gosh, you had me dying with that accent the whole time. I'm just thinking of of listening to a Harry Potter audiobook, and I'm thinking just Will Hess must never return to Fairhaven. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Dobby. <laughs> oh goodness. So, so right off the bat, it gives you their daily schedule. Uh, um, no, actually, hold on. We can't go. We we cannot go. We'll just bro- brush over some of that. So it says uh, right there that uh, if without rules, they would cease to be a Christian institution. And I think what you mean there is 
God's rules. Without God's rules, we would not be Christian. Yeah, that whoosh you heard over your head was was missing of the entire gospel message. Ooh, oh, <laughs> shot through the heart. Um, a well-disciplined life can be effective and productive life. Yes, but why are you equating this with being Christian? Like your way of doing things here is somehow Christian. Yeah. None of these rules are biblical. Like they're not in the Bible. You'll see that here in a second. And also, if, notice how they, well, you might not understand it, but you should just accept it. Uh, and then eventually you should just take it on as your own life because they do say that they hope that these become uh, convictions of their own. Yeah, and if essentially if you don't agree with these rules, you're just not mature. Exactly. So it's on you. Um, and so the daily schedule, I distinctly remember this. You had to be awake by 6.30 a.m. and lights out were by 11 p.m. So again, this is middle school stuff, right? You have to be awake by this time and here's your bedtime, kids. All right? I work the third shift at Burger King. Uh, at the BK, and I'd get off work usually around 4 a.m., and I would still have to be up at 6.30. And then they would even preach about how lazy it is and how irresponsible it is to take naps. <laughs> I'd never cared. I'd take a nap and just tell let I people think I'm lazy. Naps. just never get to do them anymore. Exactly. Um, and then they have wild telephone policies, okay? <laughs> so apparently in the 90s, and I do remember actually the dormitory phone still had this timer back in the day. There is a limit of 15 minutes on all dormitory phone calls. By the way, the dorm phone is in the middle of the hallway where all the other rooms are, and it, there's a little chair there, and it's like one phone. And it's limited to 15 minutes. Uh, so this is basically like prison, right? That's like, where I think they got these phones from. It's probably a prison. <laughs> yeah, where they had that built-in timer where it's like, hey, uh, this is your one phone call for the day. You get one call. Who would you like to call? Well, I'd like to see my lawyer, okay? How do I get out of this place? When you call your family, it first rings them and says, are you willing to accept a call from an inmate at Fairhaven Baptist College? <laughs> I think it does. <laughs> uh, this says the payphone in the classroom building has a five-minute limit. So if you ever, if you're, you, like, your you, your mom, uh, your grandma dies, and your dad needs to talk to you about how he lost his mom, and he's just talking to you and pouring his heart out, you have 15 minutes, baby. baby. You better better get all your tears out of the way now. Um, it's so pathetic. And when I was there, there was only two places you could talk on a cell phone. The second story of the dorm area, which uh, the dorm area was like a lounge where all the rooms converged so everyone could hear you speak. That was the point. They even said that. Or the second story of the gym where, again, this is where everyone was all the time. <laughs> so there's only two places. You could not talk uh, while you're walking up and down the driveways. You could not talk on your way to the student building. You couldn't talk in a lounge area or the cafeteria. You were, it was off limits. So it is all to control you. And it's so arbitrary. And again, not biblical. I'm just saying yeah. you are a Bible college, and we're all about biblical authority. Not just any biblical authority, but the King James Bible. <laughs> and meanwhile, you don't even have, like, these aren't any biblical rules. You're just coming up with literally as arbitrary of rules as you can come up with. Why? Yeah. I don't know. Just to control you. Couples and dating. Oh, Brian, boy. take it away. All right. So one of the things that has to start the section says, dating at Fairhaven Baptist College must be above reproach and in every way honor the Lord Jesus Christ and the reputation of the school. <laughs> Reputation of school and Jesus Christ are on the same level, apparently. <laughs> um, or maybe even the reputation of school is higher because it was mentioned last. Oh, maybe. Yeah, there's a little emphasis there. Uh, some other things, talk about formal dating, like when you're allowed from like 6 to 8 p.m., whatever. Like they even get tell you when you can do dates. <laughs> it's a little weird. You have weird. to wear a tux for the formal dating, I assume. Uh, no. Uh, a tux is worldly. You have to wear a three-piece suit. Oh, my goodness. Anyway, uh, students may not touch members of the opposite sex. Again, back to that. Uh, improper conduct such as sitting or walking too closely must be avoided. Ah, social distancing before it was in vogue. Dude, I, for what I understand, the Independent Fundamental Baptists never even struggled with COVID because they've already been sitting six feet apart anyway. Uh, <laughs> what is too close? Is it like three inches, six inches? Is there a biblical measurement here? They always joked around that uh, you would uh, have to have enough for the Holy Spirit okay. to be fit between you. And I'd say the Holy Spirit indwelled me, so... How you doing? <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> I said that once to uh, to the dean of men at Crown when he told me I sat was sitting too close to my girlfriend, and uh, I, I was like, "Well, how much?" He's like, "You got to leave room for the Holy Spirit in there, Mister Hess." And I'm like, "Well, the Holy Spirit dwells me, so." And he's like, "Don't." <laughs> That's all he said. Like, Don't. <laughs> well, am I wrong though? Um, anyway, so. 
Uh, any off-campus dating must be approved uh, 48 hours in advance. I just find it weird that they have so many weird timetables. Or if you want to go on a longer date later on, they say that you have to have it a week in advance. I procrastinated like, way too much in college to be able to have yeah, dated expect, anyone, according to these rules. Like, apparently, you're expecting college boys to plan ahead. You're adorable. Most of them, uh, my, my uh, friends were cramming their papers, their uh, exam, and their notebooks the night before it all was due but anyway i can picture like the boss move like you submit the permission slip before you ask her out like i know i got this <laughs> like hey baby permission slip was in yesterday well why well for <laughs> kathleen smith he's asking her out. are they together no he's about to ask her out oh all right <laughs> all right that's don't get too close uh, bold move there cotton all right a college girl needs her parents permission to date when the boy's parents are the chaperones Explain what? this one to me. This one didn't make any sense to me. So, I don't understand. <laughs> one, there's, two, there's two reasons for this in the IFP world. One, they look at girls as perfect, delicate little flowers that have to be protected from evil boys. Evil boys are only looking out for one thing, and which is sex, for those of you who do not know. Spoiler alert. Apparently, boys only want sex. That's all they're out for, so they have to protect the girls. And therefore, anything associated with the boy, uh, what if the boy can manipulate his parents to leave him alone so he can take advantage of that girl? Ah, evil. Yep, apparently, because all boys care about is one thing. It's so stupid. So I guess screw their parents, right? So if they're if they're good Christian parents too, I guess they should just grow in maturity and not be offended when their possible daughter-in-law can't come along on any of their family activities. Um, before a student get oh, this is good. Before a student gets engaged, he should see Dr. Vogelin. Present male stu present male students may not get married until they're at least 22 years of age. Why are you dictating why I can get married, bro? It's my marriage, not yours. I, it's, and then also, why do I need to go talk to somebody there at the school if I want to get engaged? And I think marriage of all things should be based in, in scripture, right? An age limit here at 22, there's not a single verse for that at all. So we're talking about a man, a man and woman entering their, their spiritual walk together as uh, one flesh, and now we're setting rules even about that. Exactly. So ridiculous. Oh, and if they marry before this age limit, they must drop out of college for one semester. Yep. Why? <laughs> so that way they can focus on their marriage because they're too dumb to be able to be married and work on homework. Oh, my goodness. Um, also, so they have this whole thing about uh, dating rules, but here's the thing. The, uh, they have a, an academy there. So whenever a college student is dating a high school student, which is a little weird, um, what his status, what his status is, is what plays whether or not they get how many hours they get to go. So they say the lowest status, like if you're in high school, you'll get like a two hour date, but if you're a sophomore in college, you get three hours or whatever. Oh um, this worded very poorly, so I'm not going to try to read it, but this part right here says the length of the date is determined by the lowest classification of the couple. For example, a senior dating a sophomore will be allowed a three hour date. High school boys may not date college girls. Any dating between high school student and college student must be approved first. So here, again, read between the lines here. If boys, high school boys can't date college girls, it means college boys can date high school girls. That's the only dating that would happen here is if I was a student in the college and I was checking out the high school girls, which is a little weird. Probably Apparently something you should probably okay. discourage for obvious reasons, but whatever. I guess here we are. At least um, if you're going to allow it, then why is it different for guys and girls? Yep. Um, also... Rule number 15, this one, page six. This one, you know, irks the <laughs> crap out of me. I mean, I, I still have half a mind to, like, call them every once in a while and just, like, ask them about this rule and blast whoever answers the phone. Uh, rule number 15, no interracial dating. Come on. My wife is Korean. My daughter is uh, half Korean and half German. And uh, so that right there... Is ridiculous. Moses married an Ethiopian. Last I checked, Ethiopians were pretty dark and not Jewish. And that was his wife. And here's okay, you know what? There is no there is no interracial dating. There's no interracial marriages. Because we're all one race. The, this the human race. God created mankind in his own image, and in his own, in his own image, he created them, male and female, he created them. That's it. It mentions nothing of that. And when people start bringing in these stupid things like, oh, well, the clay doesn't mix with the whatever, that's referring to Get out like, of here with that crap. Yeah, cultures. That's a culture thing. When Israel wasn't allowed to, because guess what? Those people from those cultures were allowed to come into Israel. So this whole thing is creating 
rules that don't exist. And this gives like, so you and I are conservative Christians. And I remember when you were like, dude, no one's actually like that racist. Like there's no conservatives that are actually that much. And then when you found this, when you found the IFB. Yeah, you're, you're giving them a point. You're giving them the whole argument. Stop it. You're saying the, the quiet part out loud. You put it on paper. <laughs> <laughs> this is why we say that Bible college rules should be based in scripture. There's no scripture that backs up banning interracial dating. Yep. Get out of here with this nonsense. This should never have been done. No one should be backing this up. And I've seen on the internet now people from Fairhaven defending this rule. Yep. Give me the explanation for why you defend this. Yeah, and you know what? And this is why it's like this is why uh you're it's shameful. You are hating the image of God. If you are dis- if you will not allow that, you are barring the image of God because we're image bearers of God. That we are, you are um, directly defined the Imago Dei is what it's called, and yet here we are. So the fact that we're in 2021 and we still have Christians that defend this only gives people ammo to keep calling Christians racist, and it's just simply not true. The vast majority are not, but people like you, people with this rule, give ammo and give credence to those accusations. And there's not a single part in scripture, because if you are looking at all those areas that it mentions things like other, marrying into other nations, you will notice the fact that's always in lump with the values and the culture and the paganism and idolatry of those nations. It's not dealing with the skin color or whatever traits of those people. Yeah, and even in, in Israel, they could always convert to Judaism and then marry. Was- yeah. And also, and then like w- define interracial because the world has broadened so much. So like, I'm German and Dutch. You're Dutch and German too. I'm mostly just Dutch. Okay. And so does that mean you can't be with someone who's English and I can't be with someone who's Scott? Yeah, I don't. I don't. What is the line? Do we have to get like paint strips out here? I mean, come yeah, on. you get paint strips out and you go with by pigmentation. Um, and however closer you are, if you cross like over the fifty percent line, then you can't do it. Uh, it's it's absurd. Or, or like um, like the Hispanics, like that was because of the Spaniards. Spaniards came and uh, they colonized in South America, and then they interbred with the uh, with the locals there. And now we have what you see in like Mexico and stuff. This is actually this is true, by the way. You can see this. That's why there's like different shades once you go north. It's because of a lot of the Spaniards. So now that those people, now my question is, when you are of the mixed races, if you are between two different ethnicities. Then who do you get to be with? Just who you look the most like? Is that how it works? Because God create God cares about the outward appearance of, oh, wait, no. He cares about the heart. Oops. God shows no partiality. And your rule shouldn't either. Boom. Hypocrites. All right. Students may not be together more than 15 minutes before service. Why? Like, why can't they hang out before church? Anyway, I thought we should be encouraged getting early, being responsible. Um, also, stu- uh, dating students may fellowship in the school building a maximum of 15 minutes after the end of all services. <laughs> it's so weird. All right, oh appearance and dress. Let's go into this. Oh, gosh. That's... Yeah, we're going to kind of read a lot of this, and we're probably also going to add some commentary. Yep. But we'll put it on the screen. Buckle in. Watching. All right. Uh, you, I'll let you take the first one. All right. So all men, all men students, all men, all male students, all men students are required to wear conservative, whatever that means, dress shirts and ties to classes. When I was there, it was white shirts, light blue shirts, and light yellow shirts. You cannot wear bright red, dark blue, or anything like that. Just yeah. so you know, that's what conservative dress apparently means to them. And apparently, chapel meals, bus routes, and other things specified. Uh, suits or sport coats must be worn at evening meals, church services, and college functions, which are not of a casual nature. In areas designated for recreational or work, uh, sweatshirts or t-shirts, jeans, no shorts or sweatpants, and tennis shoes may be worn. Okay, why not sweatpants? Is that I don't get it. All other times with all at all other times, shirts with collars must be worn. So these are wrong. Yep. Oops. Shirt tails must be tucked in. Okay, that's kind of, I get it. I don't like how that looks. Shoes and socks must be worn in public. Okay. Tight trousers, <laughs> them skinny jeans, uh, <laughs> designer tucked pants, and modern pant fashions are not allowed at any time, except though suits are modern pant fashion. Yep, and thinner, like, define that too, because there's so many different, like, suit styles. There's four button suits, three button suits, two button suits. Two button suits are in vogue now, so does that mean you have to wear three button suits? Uh, what is that? Oh, the thin lapels, the the little spiked lapel, that that like. Yeah, what is the old path for suits? Please just 
give us a little bit of a definition there. <laughs> I don't know what suit Jesus wore, so you're going to have to help me out. Um, sandals are not allowed in public. Don't tell Jesus that. <laughs> or Moses. Belts must be worn. In, here we go. Belts must be worn with trousers designed for belts. Okay. So don't wear belts without belt loops. I don't know what that means. Hair must be neatly cut and combined above and combed ab- above the eyebrows. Uh, that's not me. It yeah, must I was be say, you would get kicked out right away with your hair. <laughs> must be tapered in the back. Proper haircut includes normal sideburns. <laughs> I don't get it. Oh, my goodness. Um, normal means, I guess, worldly? I, I guess so, because I guess that's normal. Um, women should be tastefully and modestly dressed. Hose should be worn in public. That's so poorly worded. You should wear something over the... Was I think? Yeah. <laughs> um, <clears throat> so hose should be worn in public. Uh, again, why? Like, why are you care if someone wears pantyhose? It's so bizarre. I know it's what Mother Mary wore. Anyway, proper skirt length is determined by the distance between the floor and the hemline, not exceeding two inches at any point around the skirt when the student is in an upright kneeling position. There is a lot of steps to that to figure out whether something works. Pleated is there like a line as they're at exiting the dorms where they're like, okay, they got. Old lady with making everyone kneel and like she's got the ruler. Then when they don't, she like swats them with it. You're above the red line. Pleated culottes that look like a skirt and meet the hemline requirement may be worn in the dormitory. Also for cleaning and sporting activities. No gauchos are allowed. Hippie styles. (laughs) They actually have that in here. I want to shout out to 26 letters podcast. I had no idea what culottes were until a couple months ago when they did that episode. And I was I'm still dumbfounded by those. They look really strange, and I'm sorry for all you women who were forced to wear these. <laughs> yeah, it's so bad. <laughs> Hippie styles, low-cut net, necklines, and or backs, immodest slits, more than two inches, because uh, a three-inch slit is apparently immodest. See-through apparel, apparel, shorts, slacks, and tight-fitting apparel are forbidden. And again, define tight. Like, when I was at Crown and Fairhaven, like, sometimes women, can we just say certain women are more curvy or well endowed in comparison to other women is that a modest way to put that um and so what pretty much would happen if a woman looked attractive they were told she was immodest because everyone was apparently checking them out it's kind of like bill though he wants those attractive haircuts. yeah he wants those attractive haircuts uh, ladies are expected to use makeup in a proper way so that it is not excessive or unnatural worldly this would apply to the color and amount of makeup used especially eyeshadow why hair curlers may not be worn in public (laughs) who does that anyway like i'm putting on my hair curlers and totally go to walmart right now but if you do you better be holding that rolling pin and going after someone exactly stress regulations for women must be observed by the wives of men's students as we would not retain any student whose wife is seen improper or immodest so apparently he's not the man of his own home they're all about male leadership until it comes to his house, and their rules must be above his house. The college owns you. Yep. We, we own your soul. Uh, a, a white Fairhaven sweatshirt is required for girls' physical education classes. I just thought that was such a weird, like, blurb. Like, wh- wh- why? <laughs> yeah. Uh, discipline. Uh, Fairhaven, in order to assist and encourage our students to develop strong Christian character, uh, because apparently uh, without intense discipline, you don't have strong Christian character, Fairhaven Baptist College maintains a reasonable and just yet firm system of discipline. There's nothing reasonable about this. I don't think they know what that word means. Uh, You keep using that word. I do not think it means what you think it means. Uh, Failure to observe policies or an infraction of a regulation will result in a measure of discipline stipulated as demerits. Uh, Yeah, you get demerits. They're like naughty points. uh, The more demerits you have, the naughtier you are. And at Fairhaven, if I remember straight, after you got 10 demerits, you had to serve detention. Um, In detention, you worked it off like 10 demerits. was like one hour of service for the church. Kind of like credit credit card miles. Yeah, exactly. But the thing is, people looked at Demaris the wrong way. See, me and my friends, we, we thought about this at, at college. Everyone looked at them as naughty points. And they would talk about it, too, like, these will be on your permanent record here. And I'm like, okay. But you're looking at it the wrong way when you look at it as naughty points. Anyone who's listening to this and you're at a Bible college now, stop looking at them as naughty points and start looking at them as freedom points. You have a certain amount you can spend per semester, and then they reset. Okay? It's just their way of making sure you don't have too much fun and forget about your studies. <laughs> I had to pause here. My mic was falling down. Uh, well, it, it's okay. You're, 
Are you good? I'm good. All right, very good. Um, so yeah, it, it, I just find that funny. Basically, detention is served by uh, is taken care of by community service. Just making the, the the jail parallels are really really going strong. Uh, I, right. I see page eight really as the the epitome of their kind of playbook of how they control you. Yep. So first one here, will go for it. The first one is at, if at any time a student manifests a destructive influence or a spirit of controversy on the campus or engenders a spirit contrary to the purpose of the principles for which the college stands, he is subject to expulsion, even though he may not have broken any specific rule or regulation. Notice that any specific rule, like we, we know that this is vague but we reserve the right. So this is their method of stomping out division. This yep. is them stomping out anyone for that's thinking for themselves. Spirit of controversy. The, the communist and regime, I mean, the, the administration. Yeah. Uh, also, so spirit of controversy, I mean, first off, the church split would not be allowed because we only talk about divisive topics almost exclusively. And yeah. uh, I remember one time I was there, I was in our little break room in the men's uh, dorm, and I was like, so wait, guys, all right, so the King James Bible, and this is back when I was still questioning things uh, with some of the things, because I was like not IFB in music and in movies and in video games. Like I was totally not, but I was still kind of a King James onlyist. Mm -hmm. But I was like King James preferred, because I was like, well, the other ones have the gospel, so I don't know if I can say that. Anyway, I was like, guys, wait, hold on. So the King James is translated from the Texas Receptus. If it's translated from the Texas Receptus, is it not physically possible that God could uh -oh. or that we could uh -oh. translate a new version of the Bible with modern day language. Yeah. I should have thought about that, Brian. And then they, I mean, every head spun around and everyone started yelling at me. <laughs> I, I, you would think I questioned that, like the deity of Jesus Christ himself. And like, I would have, and I proclaimed Satan as my Lord and savior, like the way they acted. And they were you just yelling better. You should know better. <laughs> I was told later that uh, I need to have a better attitude and I have a spirit of controversy and I need to be more obedient. Now I'm also over here like, did you not read page eight? Apparently not. <laughs> um, and uh, finally, oddly enough, uh, Fairhaven was stricter than Crown, but I actually got along with everyone easier at Fairhaven than I did Crown. Crown was way more snotty. <laughs> anyway, um, 10 here is, if a student has a definite difference with the church, um, he should see his dorm supervisor to have an appointment made with, with Dr. Behrens or Ms. Armacast. Mr. Armacast. <laughs> Mr. Armacast. And he should not talk about it with other students. So we first had the first rule was stopping the the bad behavior. Now we're having the control element. Right. If you have an issue, don't talk to, don't, um, don't talk to other students about it. You must go to administration. Then uh, demerits will be posted weekly, and campus and expelled students will be announced during chapel each Monday. So now we have the shaming. So we have the stop, the control, and then the shame. Yep. And then you wonder why people call it a cult. Also, you have to ask permission permission to go anywhere. You have to have permission slips turned in. Uh, we're going to go over some of that here in a second. But first, I want to talk about students being campused. It talks about there's this whole thing broken down about students being campused. And what does that mean? Because I didn't even know what that means being campused. Yeah, so being campus basically means you got in so much trouble with the IFB people that you are now campused. You are now in jail. <laughs> it's official. You can only go to work and come back. You can't go to any social activities. You cannot date. You cannot have conversations with other people. You cannot hang out with other people. Essentially, you are shunned. It's like the Amish when they start shunning you uh, it is literally that it is the exact same thing or when the Jehovah's Witnesses That's start exactly shunning you <laughs> it is the exact same thing meanwhile they'll call them cults and, oh yeah they control everything the watchtower tells them how to think and it's like okay all right have you looked in the mirror recently um so yeah, uh, what else? The student may not leave campus except for work. Yeah, that's a big thing with being campus. So um, also I find it funny that you must have a C average to use the gym. Like in order to use the gym. Oh, but one of the things is when I was there, you actually had to weigh in and you had to take PE and you had to lose weight or gain weight depending on what the situation was at the, by the <laughs> end of semester or else you get docked on your grade. Literally body shaming you at Bible college. I am fearfully, wonderfully made except for when you're fat. <laughs> Uh, all right, moving on. Uh, okay, so, um, so here students have to have their room clean each day by 8 a.m., so they're a little bit more strict than Reeves. I think it was 9 a.m., Yep, but only yep. for the women. Yep. Oh, let's do all music recordings. This is fun. All music report recordings, CDs and cassettes that are brought on campus, whether played in the dormitory or car must be approved and stamped by Pastor Dameron. Students may submit a maximum of 12 tapes for approval. 
All tapes must be original commercially produced tapes, no copies. A total of 15 may be kept in your car or your room. Wait, what? So you can have 12 that are approved, but you're going to be in possession of 15, but those 15 can only be in your car. Also, in this rule book, um, 12 is written with numerics, and then 15 is written out. So I want to know what those other three tapes are. Like, uh, Led the Zeppelin, ones? Led Zeppelin, probably some Evanescence, and Classic Crime. Not bad. Yeah. I All right. see why you don't want to get those approved. <laughs> Actually, I did do a lot of jamming to Evanescence. Okay, <laughs> fun fact for you. So when I left Fairhaven, um, I was so done with it. And I mean, I heard some of the most vile things spoken of there, and I saw the most vile things done there. Because uh, one of the things is, for example, they they would spank their academy students, including like 17-year-old boys. Oh my God. Like if they, they would like, and at the end of school, the school, that you would go upstairs and there would be a line and they'd spank your demerits out. <laughs> um, and there's so many horrible things. And so when I left, I wanted to make sure I made the, uh, a very noticeable impression. I got one of those like, this is early, like early mid 2000s. So I was wearing like one of those like distressed graphic tees. I wore faded uh, because you weren't allowed to wear faded jeans. I wore faded and whole torn uh, jeans. Oh my gosh. Like even like they were kind of like the buckle ones, like with like the button, like butt, uh, butt pockets and everything. Um, I came in wearing my Ray-Bans, drove down to my uh, my dorm to do my pickup, blasting hard rock. <laughs> um, my, me and my brother get out, and I, I mean, I have people following me, telling me that I'm going against the will of God, that I'm going to go off into, I mean, it was this whole event, and I'm finding it funny. My brother, D David, is just cracking up. So we, like, load up all our stuff. And for those of you guys who do not know, my brother uh, does not attend church or anything. Like, he was pretty well done with it because of everything, all the abuse he had been through. We get in the car, and we're driving out. And my brother literally, like, hangs out the window and flips everybody off. Oh I kid God. you not. <laughs> so to this day, I'm not sure what my reputation is there for that. But I definitely wanted to make a statement. But I wasn't expecting my brother to be like, you know, but to everybody with the bird. But here we are. If they forgot you, now they remember again. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. What else? Well, uh, only Acceptable radio station is WBBM 78 AM. Yep. So there's only uh, only AM station. A good old uh, good old approved stuff there. Um, oh, this is a crazy thing. So if you move into the dorms, I remember this. My mom couldn't help me unload. Uh, so only mothers of dorm student uh, uh, only mothers of girl dorm students will be allowed in the girls dorm room. Men and fathers of the students are never permitted in girls room at any time. Only fathers of boys dorm residents will be allowed in boys dorm rooms. Ladies and mothers of students are never permitted in a boys room at any time. No exceptions. That's so complicatedly worded. Is this going back to the whole? They just don't trust men whatsoever. They're just well. It goes yeah. It goes into that whole thing of like women. If you are or men and women, if you're in a room together at all, uh, it's inappropriate because you guys could have sex or be lustful. So therefore, even the fathers and sons can't go into the girls' dorm because that's where the girls stay. What if they lust or look after the girls, or they see a bra of one of the girls in the room? Because of course, nobody knows that women wear bras. Apparently, it's just it's so over the top. And then you, again, then you wonder why these people come out. And there's a lot of sexually messed up people that come out of the IFB. Um, I mean, people, a lot, I mean, that's the whole thing that, uh, Eric does at Preacher Boys, right? Like yeah. it's, it's showing that, um, I wanted to compare this because, so I pulled up, um, my old college's rules that are talking about dorm life and men and women, because I thought it'd be an interesting kind of comparison, which I thought when I was at Calvin was pretty conservative. Um, fun fact, they put the rules on their website. They're not ashamed of them. Oh, so they're not ashamed of them. These, oh, so these nice. took some, some, uh, work to get these cause they don't post them on their website. Uh, probably for good reason, especially the racist one. Um, but there says the, the visitation policies, open house hours in the resident halls are intended to promote healthy Christian relationship between men and women for the purpose of studying and socializing within the context of large communities of students living under the same roof. Open hour, open house hours are limited to the same privacy that so, so that some privacy is assured for students so that they have individual floors are able to create strong communities. When hosting significant others of opposite sex guests, students are required to leave their room doors open. Um, Kelvin recognizes the importance of roommate courtesy and temptation to which, which closed door privacy may represent. I think that's a lot more middle of the road, a lot more common sense. Like we don't want to create major opportunities for you guys yeah. to have that. But at the same time, we want to respect the fact that you're adults. You need to have conversations and you can operate and live and we're going to give you personal responsibility. But hey, leave the door open that way. You're not going to get frisky when people are walking by. Yeah, And it wasn't every day. Like there was days that you could go to each other's dorm rooms. I had to keep the door open, but it wasn't every single day. And it was kind of nice, too, when you have roommates like, oh, at least I know 
um, their girlfriend isn't coming over today, so I can spend more time studying. But I think it was a lot more middle of the road. I, even at that point in time, I thought that was too conservative. But um, I think there was a lot of – actually, a lot more scripture influencing that rule than these. Yeah, exactly. Um, all right. Lights out must be by 11 p.m. No talking will be permitted at that time. <laughs> you must not be adults. You cannot do that. Again, this is like a – Okay, your mom. fifth grade sleepover. Okay, <laughs> um, so, exactly. Okay, no mom. Pokemon cards either. <laughs> <laughs> Students who work ten to twenty hours, or, like notice, and these are just uh, we have skipped over a lot of these types of rules in here, but this is how how, how nitpicky Fairhaven gets. Students who work ten to twenty hours per week are permitted to study until one a.m. Sunday, Tuesday, and Thursdays only. Students who work over twenty hours are permitted to study until one a.m. five nights a week, Sunday through Thursday only. Like. Who comes up with that? Why? And how do you balance that out? And shouldn't you encourage people to stay up late to study? I don't know. It's weird. It's just a really underhanded way of teaching the kids how to do math. And notice this. If anyone who abuses these special hours, will, uh, they will all lose their student, their, their privilege to study late. So they're always making threats. Um, when I was actually there, because I knew I wasn't getting any sleep when I had to work until 4 a.m. anyway, and because of my work schedule, I was like, well, I'm not going to have time to do any of this anyhow. So what I do is I would fill out a work pass, say I was there till, um, you know, 4, 4 a.m. and I might get out actually at 2 a.m., but then I'd just sit in a parking lot somewhere, eat on munchies, and do my homework. So I did it. Uh, also, this is funny just because it's, again, so micromanagey. And again, you can't keep track of these rules. I remember when I was there, I could not keep track of half the rules. I can't even remember half what we talked about. Exactly. Students must take their books to work. You have to take your books to work. They will not be allowed to go to their rooms after 11 p.m. to get any materials they forgot. <laughs> like, you can't go into your own room to get your own things. Like, that's how nitpicky you are. It's so disgusting. I'm sorry. Like, this is this sort of thing actually just ticks me off because, like, the amount of arrogance and audacity. And, yeah. again, it's, it's, it's so mistreating your student body to such a degree that then you wonder why they are so ill-equipped and so immature. And where's the scriptural reason for these stupid rules? Oh, there isn't any. Did we? Oh, we, oh did you think we're at a Bible college, Brian? <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I made an assumption. Oops. Um, and then these are funny off-campus permission. So this is to, you needed uh, permission at Fairhaven to go off campus anywhere to go to work. You had to turn in work passes for every shift. <laughs> uh, to go to Walmart, you needed a work. You needed to pass. But re- notice how they show partiality here. There will be at least three women together, one of whom must be at least a second-year student who is not campused to leave campus. So there must be three women together to leave. But when it comes to men, you only need two. Hmm. That sounds like a double standard to me. It is a double standard. Be important in a minute. Also, we need to, uh, you even need to get slips to get groceries. A lot of times, again, I would fill out a work pass if I need to go to the store, and I'd just go to the next town over. And I'd go to the store, do my thing, and then leave because I wasn't going to sit there. I remember uh, girls would be running around constantly looking for three people, you know, because some of them had, were working, some of them had this and that are going on. So, and if you have a smaller student body of like only like I think at Fairhaven, it's like a hundred students tops, it, you know, slim pickings. And there's even fewer that have cars. So let that sink in. I would have started charging for that if I was them. Oh, a lot of people did. Um, so spiritual activities. Each student in Fairhaven Baptist College should consider his life as a life of service to the Lord. While the schedule at Fairhaven may be rigorous, and at times the student schedule will seem to occupy every minute of your time. So even though we take everything of your time by requirement, you should not neglect your service to the Lord. This cannot be overemphasized. For the student who is right with the Lord, notice how they're equating this, by the way. There is a false equivocation. Therefore, if you are right with the Lord, you will find the academic work to be much better. Opportunities to service in the, to, for service in the church should be regarded as opportunities not only to serve the Lord, but to develop abilities. So if you're right with the Lord, you'll be okay with not just doing your studies and not just serving in the church, but to continually serve the church and give all your time to them rigorously. And it can't be overemphasized. That's why we put it on page 12, almost at the end. <laughs> exactly. Um, another fun thing here. Um, students are required to tithe, which means giving God at least one-tenth of one's income. So your tuition is not enough. <laughs> your tuition is not enough. We want all of the money. <laughs> also, uh, tithe, biblically speaking, was 10% of... It wasn't even just 10%. If you actually calculated how everything went, it was about 30% of different things went to different things. But... Their tithe would be something like the 10% sacrifice. So Cain and Abel, for example, you'll notice his was crops. It wasn't actual finances. So uh, fun fact for you, it's not always about money. I'm not saying it's bad to give money to your church. I'm just saying, like, 
let's let's keep this within historical context. I want to see someone try to put some broccoli in the offering plate. <laughs> like the broccoli and spinach. This just is put my it in best there. broccoli. It's my the best stuff I picked all week, man. <laughs> it's my tithe. All righty. You want to go and take the next one? Yeah. So, uh, so this is a student conduct and testimony. No student may release information of any kind to any local newspaper, radio station, or television station. Doesn't say podcasts. Hey, oh, preacher boys. Um, and any student who is approached for information by a news reporter should refer the reporter to the school administration. The administration is in a position to answer the reporter's questions accurately and speak officially about the college. So it's like they even know the fact that they're creating a scenario. And they were, I mean, there's, uh, you could look, if you look up Fairhaven Baptist, you'll find a bunch of uh, news stories uh, that are uh, uh, following abuse there. And uh, uh, Fairhaven was very political in all their responses. People tried ambushing Vogel and a few others there. And they was like, ah, no, we're not going to. And this might be also why they don't put the rules online. Exactly. So uh, this is, again, it's a control tactic that happens at a lot of these places. You know, you're not allowed to speak to anyone about what happens here. Keep it to yourself. And can someone say cult? Cult? Culty. Anyway. You just said it. I just said it. Oh, my gosh. Do the facial hair. This is funny. Oh, so yeah. No student may grow a mustache without permission of Dr. Vogelin. So I'm just like picturing the kid and like, oh, I really want to grow that mustache. The ladies will really like this. So they're just writing that letter to Dr. Vogelin like, can I pretty please grow some hair above my lip? <laughs> also, I like how specific it is on which faculty member that is. Yep. Like to get that approval. So He's bizarre. the mustache guy. Mustache He's guy. Mustache, you know, uh, also, again, this like at all these places, they were so weird about facial hair. They want you to be clean shaven every day. I remember they told me to shave every day and I'd shave every other day. Once in a while, people see my uh, five o'clock shadow and I'd get a comment, but I'd get razor burned terribly, like all under my neck would be red and swollen and spotty. It looked awful. Um, and it's, at least it, you were holy. And, yeah, apparently. But think about it for a second. God created men to have facial hair. Jesus had a beard. Moses had a beard. It was actually in Jewish law, it was considered masculine to have your beard. And if you shaved your beard, you looked feminine. It was a big thing. Like back there in the ancient Near East, a beard and facial hair was a symbol of a pride of who you are as a man. Uh, just like uh, like Paul says, like oh, a woman's hair is her glory and her honor. Mm -hmm. It's the same concept. And it's like, wait, but we can't have beards. You'd think if we're striving for old paths, we'd at least include that part. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but again, we're, we're the old paths is not old, actually old paths. It's just like some era in Americanism. So, um, all right. Because of numerous problems in the past, <laughs> this is funny yeah, and awful. We require students to notify the administration if they are contacted by a pastor or a church concerning a job. While most pastors are very ethical and contact us first, we have had several who have offered jobs to sophomores and juniors Without regard to God's will, thinking that because the students are from Fairhaven that they're qualified for the job. So is the administration like a whole bunch of prophets? Like they understand God's will. These other preachers who may seem ethical, they don't understand God's will like I do. Like we did a rebuttal to Chris Yoon, who was a, essentially a Trump election prophet. It was really strange. Honestly, I lost a lot of brain cells doing the video, but uh, he he said that he knew God's will, and God's will was that Trump was going to be president even in March of 2021. I don't understand it, but anyways, this is what it reminded me of was this this, this kind of assu assumption that they know God's will and no one else does. Exactly, um, and and that they would say that too, like, well, you have to trust us, you know, for God's will, and they they equated them themselves and their thoughts and their opinions with God's will all the time. Then you wonder why so many people leave their spun out. If you're gonna work for Fairhaven, do you have to put that on your resume? Like they see, oh, knows God's will. Bullet point number three. Well, I'm in luck because my name is God's will. <laughs> I mean, my name is Will, so I can say I am God's will for your college. See, my name is Will. It's in. It's literally in my name. I, I told my wife once I'm God's will for her life, and I thought it was funny. <laughs> it wasn't as good as a Brian Edwards dad joke, but it was a good attempt. Look, you know, Brian Edwards is like king of dad jokes, all right? I, I've been a biological father for nine months now, and yes, Tabby, I adopted you ages ago, but I'm still really bad at this, okay? <laughs> and now i got to make sure I give her credit or else she yells at me when I, when I claim only the biological yeah, She child. will troll you. She will troll me. Because hard. of this, we insist that you let us know immediately if you are contacted by another church or pastor. We require all students to set up an appointment with Dr. Barron's before interviewing for a job or a teaching position so we can control you. Yep. Uh, right here, uh, Preacher Boys, shout out, by the way, to the Preacher Boys at Eric's, with Eric Swazinski. Preacher Boys or missionaries leaving Fairhaven Baptist College to begin their ministries may not accept money from individual members of Fairhaven Baptist Church. 
So now we control your money too. Yeah. So, <laughs> uh, and there's a few things about this, by the way, I wanted to touch on. So let's say you're a church member and you have this student that's been attending your church and your school for four years or so, and they're senior, and now they want to be a missionary to Uganda. And you have a really strong relationship with them. You, you saw them start dating their, their spouse and they're married and they really want to go to Uganda. And you were like, you know what? I'm going to give you money. And I'm going to be the first one. I'm going to give you, I make a lot of money. So let's say $1,200 a month. I'm going to give you $1,200 a month to get you guys started on your deputation process. Nope. And they say you can't do it. They say, so they're, they're dictating a couple things here. Uh, one, they're, in, they're dictating the liberty of their church member. Mm -hmm. uh, and their church member's wallet, they are telling them what they can't do. And it's funny because, again, coming from the IFB, who's hyper-conservative, and they're very much like, the government can't tell me what to do with my money. We probably should, they probably don't even want income tax, right? A lot of these people like, the government can't tell me what to do with my money. Meanwhile, you could tell your church members what to do with their money. And then also, you're telling this kid who's supposed to be trying to go out on the mission field that he can't accept that money. You know really what this comes down to is they want that money for the church themselves. Yep. And they don't want anyone supporting people that they don't support. Again, it's, you guys are putting the things in writing you're not supposed to put in writing. Yeah. This should not be in writing. <laughs> and it's, so, it's just another control tactic is all it is. And then people wonder why they, people call the IFB a cult. It's because you dictate, you overstep every personal boundary you possibly can. Uh, this let's, is what I understand now about RP. I understand what, you, what everyone's recovering from, and it's stuff like this. Yeah, exactly, And because that was the thing that you didn't understand, and I never considered myself like this recovering fundamentalist. I just looked at it eventually and was like, the, the scales fell off my eyes fully, and I was like, this is stupid. I'm out. And once I was wrecking their quote-unquote doctors and debates, and they could not answer a singular one, single one of my questions, and I was able to bulldoze them, it was like, okay, this isn't true because truth should be able to, truth doesn't fear a challenge. Truth should be able to withstand being challenged. And you said on another podcast where I thought was really good is that um, if you can't defend why you believe something, don't be surprised if someone doesn't agree with you. Yeah. If you can't defend it, don't be surprised if somebody doesn't agree. And if you can't defend it, then you probably shouldn't be trying to force it on others. And you probably don't have the truth on your side. Exactly. Um, all right. So student, and this is another crazy one, student wives and children m must maintain a separated Christian testimony and abide by the college guidelines also. So if I'm a student now, I'm 30 years old and I go there to be a student, my wife and my child have to go follow these exact same rules. Are they trying to like... Does your little girl have to also put her knees on the ground and measure her skirt? Before yeah, like church? nine months old. Uh, well, actually, there's a really funny clip, uh, IFB Preacher clips shared about Vogelin talking about pants and babies and toddlers. Oh, really? Yeah, and he talks, I was like, well, I don't know really when that time is, but that's is where discernment comes in. Maybe, you know, I'm not saying a onesie is sinful, but once they get to a certain age, they need to start wearing skirts. That onesie is tight fitting, though. It is tight they fitting. I already said you can't wear tight fitting clothes. Yep, exactly. Um, so it's just, it, it's so wild and the children must obey it. So then what about, what if a child bumps into an, uh, like, what if my daughter bumps into a boy? Like, what if my daughter bumped into Brayden or gave him, or, or gave him a hug? Does that, does she get to marry us? Does she have to do, I mean, it's just like, <laughs> what? nothing is innocent. Nothing's innocent in the IFB is like in these things. Like, it's just not. All right. Let's see what else. Uh, all right. Summer rules. Brian, this is where you wanted to kind of... This yeah, I thought that was kind of funny. So it says, um, you know, we desire college students to have a testimony that is above reproach during both the school year and summer vacation. For this reason, college students must observe the college rules that apply to them during the summer also. Now, we didn't go over it in detail, but they have these permission slips that you're required to turn in daily if you want to date someone. Do you have to do? Do you have to live in Indiana in order to date someone during the summer? If you live in Ohio, you're screwed. Like, and what if you are going to date someone who doesn't go to Fairhaven? Like, do they have to also turn their permission slip? Like, where does the absurdity end? Right. This doesn't even make sense. I don't. You can't even follow this rule if you follow the other rules. Also, when it says to be above reproach, this is something that always got me because they always talk about appearance of evil. What will other people think? And, you know, they're very appearance focused and uh, man focused. What will people think? You know, and, which God says not to worry about the opinions of man, but to instead go to please God. But I digress. But when it says above reproach, I'm always just going to whom? To whom are you talking about? Are you talking about offending you or offending God? Because I should not offend God. But if, offend, if, if choosing to obey God ends up offending you, then. I don't really care if it offends you. I should only care about obeying God. But then also it says, but then think about it this way. 
So, all right, let's just take playing cards or something. So let's say somebody wants to have me over and they want to play, they want me, and I'm witnessing to them, they want to play Texas Hold'em. They want to play some poker. Oh, boy. But they have chips, right? You're not playing with money. It's just little plastic chips. And at that point, if you're just playing poker with chips, it's literally chips would just be a point system, Mm -hmm. right? That's all it would be. Kind of like a demerit system. Kind of like a demerit system. And you're playing and... Um, now what if he, I, this guy invites me over cause we built a relationship at work to play Texas Hold'em. And I told him no, because I'm a Christian. I don't play poker. Well, now suddenly he's gonna be like, wow, this guy is holier than thou, And, uh, he's not the guy I thought he was. I maybe won't invite him to anything because apparently everything I, you know, even playing cards with this guy is evil. Um, but man, Fairhaven is happy for you. But that guy might never, ever get to know God. He might not be able to have a discipleship relationship. He might never even walk into a church because of your holier-than-thou attitude. So when it says above reproach, I'm like, above whose reproach? It should only be above God's reproach. And so these rules are not even remotely biblical. You can't find these rules in Scripture. And if we're following God's standard on being above reproach, I think that excludes being a racist. Mm. Mm. Just fun fact right there. Hit him in right, right for the jugular. <laughs> um, speaking of that... <laughs> oh, goodness. The next part... It uh, is, go ahead. It is our hope that the standards of Fairhaven Baptist College... So these are standards. Keep in mind, they're just standards. That these standards of Fairhaven Baptist College will not be just rules or preferences. So now, remember, now like these aren't even preferences. But rather convictions that will enable the student to be a strong Christian. So these convictions, everything that we've just read, is what enables somebody to be a strong Christian, who will influence others. We're not out to train hypocrites. Oh, oh, man. I almost swore when you read that. <laughs> uh, you almost swore when I read that. <laughs> Christianity has no room for du- people with double standards, except on page ten when they did have double standards for men and women. Or all the other places in here where they had double standards, like, oh, we're, we're definitely believe that everyone's created equal, but no interracial dating. Yeah. Um, it is the intention of Fairhaven Baptist College to super... It is not the intention of Fairhaven Baptist College to supersede the authority of the local church when a student goes home for the summer. We understand that the local church is the sole authority, uh, judge and authority on all matters of discipline, standards, etc. This is bull crap, by the way. I'm yeah. just calling this right out. First that off, is not Bible. It is not the intention of Fairhaven to do this. Meanwhile, you're doing it. You go, but really, though, I mean, ah, they should probably do it. Then you say that the local church is the sole authority. I'm sorry. When did the Independent Fundamental Baptist become Catholic, where the church is the sole authority? It is the word of God that's the sole authority, not the church. A church is an institution with people running it. The Bible is objective, and institutions can vary. Whatever happened to the priesthood of believers here? (laughs) <laughs> oh, we don't actually believe that, you silly. That's a Baptist distinctive. This is this is Fairhaven Culty College. Um, well, so at the same time, we try to teach all our... So keep in mind, so it is not our intention to supersede the authority of the local church. And then he goes, at the same time... So then just going to be like, but really it is. We try to teach all our students to be consistent in their standards, although you not, whether or co- whether at college or home or anywhere, as God cannot bless a double standard. As oh, we agree with that. Yeah, well, God <laughs> cannot bless a double standard, which is why I don't think God can bless the ministry of Fairhaven Baptist, because it's all a bunch of contradictions. He says, we're asking the pastor only to call and explain if there is a conflict. Another fun fact, I remember we were, um, uh, Courtney Lewis he was planning his church, and I was part of some of the students who helped, uh, like, camp, like canvas for that. Mm-hmm. A guy walked by with a red mohawk and piercings and tattoos, and I walked up to him and invited him to church. We talked for a few minutes, and he walked by. And then I turned around, and all the other students were looking at me with horrified looks. And I was like, why? What, what, what's going on? And they're like, I can't believe you talked to him. And I'm like, yeah, I talked to him because he, he – Weren't we inviting people to church? It's like, yeah, but he doesn't look like a guy that Jesus would associate with. <laughs> want to bet? Yeah, want to bet. <laughs> Meanwhile, Jesus, he hung out with the tax collectors and harlots. Sorry there, dude. And that was actually the, the nail in the coffin for me. I was like, yep, I'm never coming back here. These are a bunch of judgmental, hypocritical Pharisees. And you know what's funny is that actually the Pharisees were at least students of the word. <laughs> like, yeah, but I'm using the Pharisees in the modern sense, not necessarily in the historical t- sense. That's a whole other topic for another time. But uh, yeah, this is wow. right here, guys. Uh, that's the end of that, by the way, of the handbook. That was a long time. And for that, guys, I do not apologize. <laughs> there was a lot in there. that, And this is important for you to understand. 
these places are overstepping God's boundaries. They're overstepping yeah. God's authority to create their own authority. Then they're equating their authority with God. Um, if for those of you guys who haven't, check out our episode um, of uh, It's Not a Sin, But a Christian Shouldn't Do It. Uh, we debunk that argument pretty thoroughly. Um, and so, guys, that's what this is. These are all just ways to control, and it is a cult-like mentality. Yeah. It, it follows everything. If you look up, I encourage you to look also look up the bite model for what a cult is, and a lot of that deals with this thought control. It deals with behavior control. It deals with everything, micromanaging little parts of your life, and then threatening public shame if you go against it. It is it's horrible. And these are some of the, and I know people wanted us to go over Hiles too, but Hiles is another crazy one. That's like, there's just too much in there for me to be able to do in a singular yeah. episode. Maybe once in a great while, like once a year, we'll do like an anniversary episode where we just go pick a random college and walk through their handbook. What we will do, um, I haven't talked to Will about this, but I'm just going to say it right now, we're going to put these on the website. If you want to download them and, and have fun perusing them yourself, uh, we'll put the PDFs up there. Enjoy. <laughs> yes. Uh, visit the church split.com and these will be up there, right? Is that yep. what we talk about? I'll put it up there. Perfect. Um, also, just want to say, I think it's, it's good for us to talk about specifically what, what happens when you're pushing these kind of rules and these kind of standards on other people. Um, I always like to say that you're actually robbing someone of their sanctification process, right? When you're going through sanctification, right? You've been justified. Now you're working on sanctification. You are seeking a, a closer and closer relationship with Jesus. You are, um, turning away from things in your life that you thought are sinful, things that are temptations for you. You are, you are doing this walk yourself. And when you force your what you believe is the best walk on someone else, you have robbed them of the sanctification process. You have robbed them of being able to, to be closer and closer to Jesus. And you could actually be setting them on a path against God, against Jesus. Well, I know so many people who uh, they equate this sort of thing, the sort of legalistic, and I know the IFP hates when you use legalism, they're like, well, the definition of legalism is uh, works-based salvation. Meanwhile, they ignore the other definition, which is an excessive adherence to a code or conduct. Let me read this again. Uh, without the rules of Fair Baptist, Fairhaven Baptist College would cease to be a Christian school. Sounds like you are, actually. Yes. Um, so, yeah, actually, that's very true. It's like, <laughs> but again, that's inconvenient uh, truths right there. A Freudian slip, perhaps? Anyway. Yeah. Uh, and one of the other things with this is that it's, that's why so many people fall off. Like, I know many people who they equate this sort of thing with Christianity and God. And God has nothing to do with that. That is not God. They Just because they ha you are literally letting them win. When you do that, because they're hijacking the name of God, and then you are allowing them to hang on to the name of God. Instead, what the Bible actually says, what it says, thou shalt not take the Lord's name in vain. We did an episode on this, but the brief idea of that is not speaking something like, oh my God, irreverently. It is actually literally means to take with you the name in vain. So this is literally, they're taking the name in vain, and you're letting them claim the name, as opposed to saying, no, you are not in charge of that. That is not God. And you don't have to throw the baby out with the bathwater. Throw the legalism. Throw the garbage, the man-made garbage out the window. And then just claim on to the truth of God. Like, go in there and rip it out from... Take that rug and whip it out from underneath them. Uh, don't let them be the ones who claim it. And don't be the ones yeah. who just fall on the wayside like so many others. Yeah, we're not saying to just go crazy with your individual soul liberty. We're saying be responsible, but have your own walk of sanctification, not someone else's, not Dr. Vogelin's, yep. not Bill Reeves, and, yours. And this comes down to, again, the Bible, 1 Corinthians 4, uh, 8 and then uh, Romans 14, the idea of individual liberty. Do not sin against your conscience. So there's things that God says, hey, these are my, the specific objective sins. But then we as people are subjective. Certain things are more of a temptation or can be a gateway to things that, for me, than other people. Know your limits. Don't sin against your conscience. Never sin against your conscience. And mine might be different than yours. But as long as we're not violating the command of God, we're not sinning. But we also don't want to go against our own conscience. So don't let them dictate and don't let people dictate your own sanctification process as you have put. Um, because that gets rid of the searching. That gets rid of the closeness of God and seeking his face. And that's such an awesome process. And as someone who's been through that, I've, I've been a terrible person in the past. Uh, that's my testimonies on plenty of other podcasts for people to listen to. I've been a terrible person. Person before and that sanctification process that I went through personally, I would never trade for anything else. Yeah, it's real. It's exactly it's real. It's not this fake, artificial, superficial rules and standards. And also, so, and oftentimes, what happens with these things is so a couple things. One, somebody might completely buy into it and become super self righteous and hypocritical as well. Mm -hmm. 
or they might fall into uh, being just throwing the baby out with the bathwater and completely disowning God in the church. Or you might get somebody who leaves that still loves God, but has completely fallen apart and doesn't know what to do and where or where to go from here. Yeah. And guys, I just wanted to say that's why the church split. That's why the RFP network exists is to help you guys, to equip you guys through this. Now, one of the things with us at the church split is that we're kind of uh, if everyone else is like you have the hermeneutics podcast that walks you through texts and then you have the young Baptist, which walks you through doctrine and the RFP podcast, which talks about things broadly. When you come to us, that's why we kind of choose to be the hammer because at, at some point you have to have a hammer. You have to be, you have to harness that Paul who confronts Peter to the face. You have to harness that side and reason for the faith. Like in Acts seventeen seventeen, you have to learn how to make a defense or in Ephesians five eleven to call out the works of darkness. And I'm just going to encourage you guys here. Don't be scared. If you are, if the Bible is on your side, you can win. You can win these debates. And so many people are still scared to even come out and understand. And it's weird that you say coming out, like I'm coming out, like, oh, I'm not actually a King James onlyist. Uh, it, it's, <laughs> it's weird. But so many people are scared to do that because they're afraid of the backlash. And I'm just going to tell you guys right now that God's with you through all of that. And I will say it is so much more liberating to live a life that's open and honest for God. I don't have to hide my, yeah. my thought. I don't, I'm not trying to please man. I'm just trying to please God. So if I'm honest about my positions and I get disowned by a bunch of people or a bunch of backlash, who cares? It's better to please God rather than man. So I'm going to be authentic. I'm going to be real. And I can't bear one another's burdens if I don't know people's burdens and they don't know the authentic true me. So that is why we, uh, well, I guess you and I are about a bunch of cut-ups on here yeah. because we are we are just trying to be authentic. And I, guys, I just want to encourage you with that. Don't let man control you. It is a very liberating thing. Let God control you. So I'm not saying let go of reins entirely. I'm not saying get rid of rules. Rules are important, but only God's rules. God's rules bring order to, to the chaos. Yeah. Um, man's rules will just keep making the chaos more chaotic. So we want to definitely say thank you to JC, Nathan, Brian for letting us do this. Uh, we hope we didn't ruin your podcast with today, uh, but we had a lot of fun, um, and I hope it was uh, a good surprise when we we brought Bill Reeves' rules uh, to the table. <laughs> yes, and so guys, thank you so much for tuning into the Recovering Fundamentalist podcast. We look forward to when they guys start again. People are dying to hear your guys' voices again, and uh, as much as it, this has been an absolute honor, I just absolutely love the fact that we're able to be part of this ministry. Industry. We're able to help other people grow and equip you. And if you guys have any questions, please feel free to reach out to us at the church split. We'd be happy to answer any of the questions you may or may not have. Um, and we do like to engage the community as much as possible. So please go ahead and do that. Otherwise, guys, looking forward to seeing you all soon over there. Take care and God bless. Thanks for listening to the Recovering Fundamentalist podcast. Be sure to stop by our social media, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Give us a follow. Also go to our website, recoveringfundamentalist.org. That's recoveringfundamentalist.org. There you can find Recovering Fundamentalist swag. You can get your t-shirts and hats. You can join our ex fundy community. See where we're going to be having some meetups. It's the recoveringfundamentalist.org. Be sure to join us next time for the Recovering Fundamentalist podcast.